welcome dear students uh, welcome to thin film technology course uh, lecture number 10 uh, and in this lecture we will proceed uh, 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 our discussions on the vacuum technology but uh, here uh, uh, we will continue our discussions uh, on the uh, vacuum gauges I mean in last lecture we discussed a couple of the vacuum gauges and this lecture we discuss uh, a few more uh, we will discuss a few more uh, a different kind of the uh, vacuum gauges so let's proceed uh, towards uh, today's lecture uh, so uh, let's start the lecture with the first kind of the gauge uh, uh, in this lecture that is we call filling a uh, core cathode gauge so uh, you can see it here in the diagrams or in the figure you can see the structures of the pinning gauge I mean it consists of the magnets so along with that, uh, we have a cathode, a cathode plate, and anode rings. I mean, this, these are the cathode, uh, this one and this one. These are basically the cathode uh, plates. And in between these uh, cathode plates, we have an anode ring. And these uh, cathode plates, both of these cathode plates and anode uh, plates, they are connected to uh, the power, DC power supply. And here, here we have, uh, and ammeters uh, that measure the currents and milliampere and along with that we have a resistance and a circuit and uh, this whole setup uh, I mean this you can see it here from here on to here uh, this is called uh, the gauge tube and here uh, there is uh, the brake lock structure uh, at the top and at the bottoms uh, they're basically the magnet that provide uh, the magnetic fields uh, so let's start uh, the formal discussions uh, with the uh, pinning cathode gauge. That is, a pinning uh, a pinning gauge measures the ion currents uh, flowing from the cathode to the anode. Uh, the magnetic field increases uh, the sensitivity by making the ion spiral as they travel to cause secondary ionizations. Uh, but one should take care of that a pinning gauge uh, reads zero, uh, zero currents uh, when the pressure is both very low and very high so the gauge must be striked to be operational in case uh, we should also check with the Ferrani gauge uh, if uh, I mean so one is particularly in doubt it means that if you are in doubt about the reading of the pinning gauge so it's better to check with the uh, Ferrani gauge so the operations of the pinning gauge uh, pinning cathode gauge so just like you can see here in the figure I mean here we have the structures uh, uh, of the uh, pinning gauge uh, the different part we already discussed I mean we have the cathodes uh, and between the cathode we have an anode uh, and uh, I mean these, these are the different parts and here again some of the parts uh, here uh, they are being enlarged and shown here separately so what actually happened at first positive ion form uh, from a discharge bombarded an acto metal cathode uh, that is normally made from uh, zirconiums or thoriums to form secondary electrons I mean let me repeat it again positive ions from a discharge tube I mean here you can see here I mean it's a uh, something like uh, I mean it's a, uh, uh, a discharge tube so what happened in this discharge tube positive ion from a discharge uh, bombarded an active metal cathode uh, these are the active metal cathode these are the active metal cathode to form secondary electron I mean uh, bombarding of these cathode they basically form what they form secondary electron so what happened with these secondary electron these electrons have a high probability of colliding with the ionizing residual gas molecule I mean here we have the ionizing residual uh, gas molecule so these electrons the secondary electron which are being emitted uh, they are being colliding and they have the probability of colliding with the ionizing residual molecule gas molecule and these gas molecules they are being ionized so the positive ion so form completely the cycle by adding ion to the discharge and we remember 
that the Meyer, the Meyer mid range is between 10 s to power minus 2 and 10 s to power minus uh, 5 tau. I mean, this is the uh, somehow a short description of the uh, operation, a uh, principle of the uh, pinning gauge. Uh, we also have uh, ionization, ionization gauge. Uh, I mean, uh, in short, we call ion gauge uh, or ion gauges. Uh, we, we are saying ion gauges because we have different kinds of ionization gauges. A typical ionization gauge, I mean, uh, the fi uh, uh, a typical ionization gauge is shown here in this particular figure. So, here you can see that at first glance, the structure look like uh, uh, somehow like an energy saver bulb and just like that we have a filament that is in red color this is the filament and the green color this one is basically the collector and uh, this net like structures uh, the round structure is basically the grad so let's start the discussions uh, what happened basically in the uh, iron gauge so iron gauge uh, it basically has the pressures lower than 10 is to power minus 5 charts. Uh, it can be measured with ion gauge. I mean, if we have a pressure that is lower than uh, 10 is to power minus 5 tau, uh, so it can be measured with the ion gauge, which are miniature ion forms are more usually directly from the actual ion form. Uh, mass spectrometer gauges that is residual gauge ionizer or a desirable extra uh, these can measure partial pressures of for example heliums uh, or of water vapor uh, so this is something like a short uh, descriptions about the uh, the ion gauge uh, the next kind of uh, operation principle of the the iron gauge, I mean, how the iron gauge uh, work. I mean, it's, uh, we have a brief introductions uh, in the operation range of the uh, iron gauge. Uh, so now, uh, let's have a discussion of the how, how the iron gauge, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's operate, uh, it's work. So the uh, operation principles of a hard filament iron gauge, I mean, how uh, the iron uh, gauge uh, is being operated. So here you can see the structures, I mean, uh, against and these figure uh, up and below, uh, we have the structures here, we have the, uh, we have the cathode, uh, we have the cathode anode and inside the cathode and the anode, uh, we have uh, the positively ions and the electrons, I mean, it's the, it's the setup, the different setup, you can see that here, these particular portions, it goes toward the vacuum system. I mean, it's the part of the gate uh, which is connected to the chamber. I mean, to measure the uh, the vacuum. And some of the portions has been enlarged here. I mean, it's, uh, uh, there are different parts in this section. It's ion collectors, electron collectors, and electrons emitter. And in this portion here, I mean, it's this portion uh, has been enlarged here. So what we have here. Uh, again, so we have electron emitters. So here we have the micro, uh, I mean the meter for uh, electron measurement that is for a current measurement. And this, uh, you know that, uh, that we call that uh, micro emitter because it's measure the current and uh, micron. This is why uh, we call micro emitter is uh, a micro emitter because it's, it's measure the current and the uh, microns. Similarly, we have uh, millimeters. Millimeters mean that it's measure the current uh, or the voltage. It's measure the voltage and uh, uh, milliamp. Um, uh, sorry, it's ma uh, measure the the currents and uh, milliampere. That's why we call that milliampere. So, uh, in formal discussions, uh, I mean, what actually happened? Heated filaments are biased uh, to give thermonic electrons which is energetic enough to ionize any residual gases molecule uh, gas molecules during the collisions i mean here we have the thermonic emission i mean here you can see it here we have enlarged these sections here we have electrons emitters i mean this is the electron emitters 
I mean this is basically a pavement uh, which is uh, biased I mean the bias voltage is provided here so uh, with the help of that it's been heated so when it is sufficiently heated so it start emitting the electrons and these electrons they are energetic enough to ionize any gas molecule here so here you can see there normal condition we say that these are, these are basically the normal gases like the organ so the thermonically emitted uh, the electron they have sufficient energy that can ionize and residual gas molecules uh, during the collision so what happened after that the positive ion form drop to an ion collector held about a 150 electron volt so here you can see that we provide a voltage that is equal to 150 volt so what is the functions uh, what we do with uh, this much of the voltage so it is basically uh, the voltage has been applied for uh, the positive ion and what it do with the positive ion uh, it drop to an ion collector I mean with this voltage I mean we held uh, uh, the collector we have the positive anode collector these are basically the collector the collector anode and these collector anode uh, they are held at a voltage of uh, 150 volt so what actually it do the positive ion form trapped to an ion collector so here you can see it here and we remember this collector is being held at a voltage of 150 volt so the current measures uh, the current measures gas number density uh, a direct measure of the pressure let me repeat it again the current measure gas number of density a uh, gas number density a direct measures of uh, pressures and the measurement range is between 10 raised to power minus 4 to 10 raised to power minus 9 torr. I mean this is the range uh, this is the vacuum uh, that we can achieve with the help of uh, ion gauge a different kind of the ion gauge so the difference uh, what is the difference between uh, one might have the question in mind uh, that uh, the functions of the Pirani and ion gauges almost look like uh, similar so what's the difference between the uh, Pirani and ion gauges so Pirani, let's start with the Pirani gauge so Pirani gauge basically measure the heat conduction of the gases uh, its operation is basically at low vacuum but when we come to uh, the ion gauge so ion gauge basically measures the amounts of thermonics uh, thermonic currents by a filament and its operation is basically at high vacuum I mean it's measured uh, the higher uh, vacuum I mean so uh, both of the ion uh, the ion gauges and Pirani gauge they are being shown here I mean it's a typical structure typical photograph of the Pirani gauge and ion gauge are shown here uh, so this all for the vacuum sections uh, if you are interested more uh, about uh, the vacuum system so it's better to uh, study uh, these study materials I mean it's a handbook of vacuum science and technology I already given the details of these book at the start of this section I mean when we were studying the vacuum technology the vacuum technology portion of thin film technology so we have already given the details uh, of these uh, three books so uh, they might be especially helpful by learning more and more about uh, the vacuum system or the vacuum technology I mean these were only the selective topics uh, we chosen from uh, we chosen for the course according to the course content there are more to learn there are more vacuum pumps uh, there are more type of the gadgets I mean which we didn't discuss in, the, uh, in our lectures but uh, the details of these uh, vacuum pumps or gauges are being available uh, and these study material so if you are interested you should consult it for further learning or for more knowledge so that's all for uh, these sections and the next sections we will start the lecture for uh, 10 film deposition
So thanks for watching. See you in next lectures. Till then, bye bye.